The Edmonton Oilers have placed a couple of forwards on waivers, plus the Carolina Hurricanes have signed one of their key forwards, Tebu Teravine, into a five-year contract extension. We'll discuss all the details of that coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, the Edmonton Oilers have placed a couple of forwards being Ty Ratty and Ryan Spooner on waivers. So of course we'll know by noon Eastern time tomorrow if any other NHL clubs have put in a claim to bring them over to their NHL team. Otherwise, these two players will likely be assigned to their American Hockey League affiliate in Bakersfield. Now, of course, last night was not a good night for the Edmonton Oilers. They suffered a very embarrassing loss to the Carolina Hurricanes. Things got off to a very ugly start in the first period. Uh, it took the Oilers quite a while to even register a shot on goal. Ended up losing 7-4. to four. Uh, They did score some goals later on as the game went on to kind of make it a little bit interesting. But certainly not one of their better efforts this year. I mean, the Oilers have certainly had their moments where they look pretty good at times, but they've had a, a rough season to say the least here. Now, if you trace back the Ryan Spooner acquisition, of course, he was acquired earlier this year in exchange for Ryan Strom. And prior to that, Ryan Strom was the player they acquired when they traded Jordan Everly to the New York Islanders. So putting Spooner on waivers and risk losing him for nothing or potentially, you know, burying him in the minors uh, means that they basically have nothing to show on their NHL roster for trading Jordan Everly, which is an absolute disgrace, really, when you think about it. Uh, you know, they traded Everly, they traded Hall. Things have just not worked out at all. Peter Chiarelli really has not done a great job as general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, so this is, you know, going from bad to worse here as they keep making these deals. So obviously most people thought they lost the trade when they traded Everly for Strom. And then they traded Strom for Spooner. And now they've got nothing at all. Of course, the other deal that the Islanders and the Oilers made a few years back was when the Oilers acquired Griffin Reinhardt for a couple of high draft picks. And of course, he's not on their roster either. So Peter Shirelli, if you're listening, the New York Islanders call you and want to make a trade. Hang up the phone before you do any more damage to the Oilers roster. You've done enough. It's time for the Oilers to move on here, in my opinion, and get a new GM. But more than likely, that's not going to happen until the offseason. We'll see what else uh, Shirelli can pull up his sleeve here between now and NHL trade deadline. But I wouldn't be completely surprised here if one or both of these guys do get claimed. I won't be completely shocked either if they go through and clear waivers and end up in the minors. I mean, neither player has been exactly lighting it up, which is why they're in this predicament in the first place. But I do think a player like Ryan Spooner, for example, who's got one more year left with a $3.1 million cap hit. I mean, he's making $4 million, but there was some salary retained when he was traded to the Oilers. So they're only uh, responsible for $3.1 million of that salary. Uh, you know, he did have a pretty decent start to his career in Boston. Obviously was inconsistent at times, went over to the Rangers. Had a pretty good start with them, then kind of fizzled out and hasn't really worked out with the Edmonton Oilers here so far. Either hasn't put up very many points. Uh, but based on his last season numbers, his actual totals weren't too bad if you combine what he did in New York and what he did in Edmonton. Um, but of course, things have kind of fallen off here again. Now, Spooner's a player who's you know been a tad bit inconsistent over the years, but certainly could be a pretty decent depth piece in my opinion. He's uh, been a little bit of a streaky scorer at times. I know I see him play more often when he was playing with the Bruins, and he certainly had many nights when he looked pretty decent, but on other nights he was invisible too. So hard to say what happens, but I wouldn't be shocked to see a team take him off the waiver wire here and give him a shot. Uh, but his contract might prevent that really from being a possibility. And so where he's still owed $3.1 million for this year and next, that might not uh, be overly attractive. Now, Ty Reddy, on the other hand, is in a final year of his contract, so he might be a lower risk for teams to, to acquire here off the waiver wire. And, of course, uh, he got off to a fantastic start with his time with the Oilers at the end of last season. I believe he put up, I was at nine points in 14 games. It looked pretty solid playing with McDavid. He uh, ended up having an awesome preseason. Uh, he was one of the leading scorers during the NHL preseason this year. Got off to a fantastic start. Then uh, things cooled off. Early in this year's NHL season, he got hurt. And it's really been all downhill from there. He hasn't been producing, playing on different lines, kind of all over the place. And things just haven't been working out. He hasn't been able to maintain what he accomplished at the end of last year and during the preseason this year. So we'll see if anybody takes a chance on either of these forwards. They're still relatively young. Orders are doing this for a couple of reasons. One of the forwards have been struggling, haven't been producing, but they likely are getting close to bringing back Andre Sequeira on defense. He's on LTIR, so they are getting some cap relief uh, from that contract right now. And in order to activate him and bring him back to the main roster to put that cap hit back on the books here, that's uh, they need to make some room because uh, they don't have enough salary cap space 
case uh, as it is to make that happen. So re removing these two contracts from the mix isn't going to be quite enough either. With Ty Reddy making under a million, and then you got Spooner's 3.1, that's only not even $4 million between the two contracts, uh, Secure's contracts more than that. Uh, so we wouldn't be shocked to see maybe either another player go on waivers, somebody else be demoted to the minors, a trade, something. They need to figure out some more maneuvering here and make the salary cap happen once Secure is ready to return. The other big news came today of the Carolina Hurricanes organization. Finish forward Tevu Teravainen has been extended for a five-year deal with a $5.4 million cap hit. Uh, he put up 64 points last year. It's been a terrific part of their young forward group right now as a top six guy, producing a lot, playing a lot with Sebastian Ajo. He, he's another guy who needs a new contract as well heading into next season. He's also going to be a pending RFA. So now that Tara Vines looked after, Ajo certainly will be the next order of business for Carolina to take care of here. Uh, so I do like this contract. I think it's pretty fair and reasonable when you look around the NHL. Some other forwards in the past couple years pending RFAs that have had 60-point seasons. I do think that some of these other guys so I've been paid a little bit more. Uh, so I think this is a pretty reasonable contract for this type of player. And I'd see him only continuing to improve here uh, with a lot of the other young forwards that they have in that lineup. He's a good fit there. You know, they brought in Nita Ryder here recently as well to add to that top six forward group. They got a lot of young defensemen to like. If Carolina can only get some more consistent goaltending in place, this team can really take some strides forward and be a much more competitive, consistent team here moving forward. So this is certainly going to be a fun team to watch here, I think, over the next couple of years as things progress, hopefully here, in the right direction. So, of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. What do you think of this contract for Tara Vinan? And what do you think of the Oilers moves here, putting Ratty and Spooner on waivers? Do you see either team claiming them? And what are their next moves here? Obviously, they want to bring Sakara back into the picture on the blue line. They need to make some more cap space to make that happen. So let me know your thoughts on how the Oilers should proceed here. If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up before you go. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.